Let's introduce a new concept, the price elasticity of demand. To do this, we will focus on the demand for a single good. It doesn't matter which good it is or if we are talking about individual demand or market demand. For this reason, we simply denote the demand by Q for quantity, keeping in mind that this could be the aggregate demand for electricity in a country or it could be Bojack Horseman's demand for liquor. It really doesn't matter. The demand function depends on the price of the good, denoted by P, as well as on other variables such as other prices and income. However, we will focus on its dependence on its own price, keeping all other variables fixed. The derivative of Q with respect to P is the approximate increase in demand when the price of the good increases by one unit. The derivative will typically be negative since demand will typically decrease with price. If you multiply the derivative with the ratio P over Q, you will get what is called the price elasticity of demand or the elasticity of demand with respect to price. We will return to the question as to why we make such a definition as well as how to interpret this elasticity. For now, simply view it as a formula. Note that the price elasticity of demand will itself be a function of P. The QDP is a function of P, and we multiply this by P and divide by another function of P. We get one elasticity when P is 10, and another elasticity when P is 20. Here is an example of how to calculate the price elasticity of demand. Say that my demand function is given by Q of P equal to 12 minus 2P. Quantities must be positive, so P must be between 0 and 6. First, we find the derivative dQ dP. In this simple example, the derivative will be the constant minus 2, although in general, the derivative will depend on P. Next, the price elasticity of demand is equal to the derivative minus 2 multiplied by P and divided by Q, where Q is 12 minus 2P. This is equal to minus 2p over 12 minus 2p. If you want to emphasize that epsilon depends on p, then you can write on the left hand side epsilon of p instead of simply epsilon. For example, at p equal to 3, epsilon is minus 1, but we can calculate epsilon for any p between 0 and 6, except for p equal to 6, at which the denominator becomes 0. Here is a second example. In this example, Q of P is equal to 4 divided by P, so P must be strictly positive, but there is no upper limit on P. The derivative of the demand function is minus 4 divided by P squared. We find epsilon equal to minus 4 over P squared multiplied by P divided by 4 over P. The P's cancel and the 4 cancels and it comes out to be minus 1. In this example, epsilon is independent of P, it is equal to minus 1 for all values of P. Let's dig into the interpretation of the price elasticity of demand. Here is the formula. The starting point is the approximation that we can make to the derivative dQ dP. We know that if we make a small change, delta P, in the price, there will be a small change in the quantity, delta Q. The derivative dQ dP is the slope of the tangent to the demand curve, and this slope will be approximately equal to the ratio delta Q over delta P, as long as delta P is small. Using this approximation, the elasticity is approximately equal to delta Q over delta P times P over Q. Rearranging this equation slightly, we can write this as delta Q over Q divided by delta P over P. We then multiply both sides by 100. Let's focus on the numerator of this expression delta Q over Q times 100. This is precisely the definition of the percentage increase in Q. Say that our initial Q is 1000 and that we increase Q by delta Q equal to 20. Delta Q over Q is 0.02 and this multiplied by 100 is 2. Quantity has increased by 2%. If delta Q is minus 20, the percentage increase in Q will be minus 2%, which is the same as a decrease by 2%. The same is true for the denominator. Delta P over P times 100 is the percentage increase in P. Therefore, 
epsilon is approximately equal to the percentage increase in Q divided by the percentage increase in P. If we increase P by precisely 1%, then the denominator is 1 and it can be removed. Epsilon is approximately equal to the percentage increase in Q when P increases by 1%. This is very useful to memorize. Keep in mind though that epsilon is generally negative. This means that epsilon without its sign is the percentage decrease in Q when P increases by 1%.